Hello and welcome to Indie Rebel VFX, Hollywood effects without the Hollywood budget. My name is Chris Temple and today we're going to take a quick look at the differences, some of the key differences between node-based and layer-based compositing and why I now prefer nodes for any serious compositing work that I might be doing. So as most of you probably know, there's two different ways you can do it. You've got your layer-based approach and you've got the node-based approach. So let's go and take a look at them. A layer-based system is very much a holdover from the old days of doing optical printing. Movies such as Star Wars and Indiana Jones, right? They were all uh, made by having different pieces of film sandwiched together and then they get written out as your new image. And that's what you do here in layers. You're just stacking pieces of film on top of each other and by changing the order, you change what the shot looks like. And each one of these uh, pieces of film, these clips essentially, can have different effects applied to it. So in this case, the helicopter has got a green screen, we've got some color correction, and there was a lens blur applied to it as well. One of the other advantages and things about a layer-based setup and the way it works is that you are dealing very easily with the concept of time. If I trim this top layer of the girl down, and I want to play it now, it kicks through, there she is, and there she goes. Very simple. Anybody can make sense of how that works because we've got experience editing videos, right? When this works just like your video editor, you're stacking stuff on top uh, for light compositing purposes. As a final advantage, anybody that's done any work at all in Photoshop understands instantly how layers work because you're doing the exact same thing that you do in Photoshop. Let's take a look now at nodes. This is a node-based compositing application. This is called Natron. You can get it for free, by the way. Highly recommend checking it out. You'll find a link in the, the description below for it. And we've got the exact same shot, only now I can see a lot more of what's going on. I can see I've got the background. We've done some things to it. I've still got this helicopter, right, that we you know, ran through a, a chroma key because originally it was green, so we keyed it, we moved it around, we did some color correction, we blurred it, all that same good stuff just like before. But you've got a, a master level. It's a lot like a mind map or a flow chart. In fact, that's actually what we've built. Nodes work by simply taking an image. In this case, we're going to add a color wheel and we proceed to do stuff to it. So here's our color wheel. I can now take that color wheel and I can move it, right? I can scale the thing down and move it over here. And maybe now I want to add a blur to it. So I go ahead and I add a blur to my color wheel. So you start with your image and you make modifications to it. That's the beauty of nodes. That's how nodes work. And we just start assembling them together with these blue ones called merge nodes. So let's go and delete these. We don't need these anymore. And like I said, the big thing to pay attention to right now is we've done this all at a master level. We can see everything at once. If I come back into my project six months from now, I still know what I've done to this. If I come back into this project six months from now, I gotta go through, click through the different layers to figure out what we've applied as well as sometimes you need to bring up position and scale controls to see if you've even changed anything because they're hidden by default you can't even see them normally so that's kind of scary actually you might forget that you had shifted something a certain way and when you need to go and recreate that you're not going to be able to and such so the ability to see your entire flowchart at once is the advantage number one advantage number two pre-comping or pre-composing. Let me show you what I mean. And After Effects, if I want to cut out everything at the same time, the easiest way is going to be to do what's called pre-composing. So I'm gonna pre-compose it, that makes one layer out of it. And now we grab our pen tool and we come in and draw the shape that we want. So let's see, there's our shape, right? We can see that there's an alpha channel applied to it. So very simple, that, that's pre-composing, right? That's how you work with that kind of effect in layers of needing to roto everything at once. If I jump back over to my node environment, it's as simple as adding in a roto node, viewing our shot, very important to do, and then you just come in just like we did before. Okay, so we roto it and we plug it into this merge node that I've already pre-configured down here. And you can see we've got the exact same thing going on, right? We've rotoed it out and I'm here at this main level. The advantage to this is that if I want to make changes to something, maybe I want to colorize this background here, I can do so while I'm looking at my final shot. 
I can come in and make my color changes. Let's say we want to make it some shade of blue. There we go. And I'm seeing it at the final level. If I want to do this in After Effects, I can't. If I want to colorize that background, I have to go into that pre-comp. We're going to add an adjustment layer here so we can color both the helicopter and the sky. And we're going to add an effect. I like one called Colorista. There it is. And now we make it blue. But if I want to see the final result, I have to bounce back over to my final composition in order to view it. And that becomes a pain, especially when, let's say we've got this uh, duplicated here like this, and we're going to scale down one of them and move it off to the side. So now you can see that this is truly our final comp. If I want to now make this pink, I've got to come back into here, make it pink, and then shoot back over into here. If I want to do it with nodes, it's a heck of a lot more simpler. Let's go ahead and duplicate this out. I'm going to scroll down to make myself some room. Move the viewer off to the side. And we're going to add a transform node. And I'm going to run that into my merge. We'll add another merge right below it. Bring it back in line. Push it up. And view it. Okay, no changes yet, but if I move this out of the way, there we go. Now we can see that we've done exactly like we did before. And viewing our final composite, if I'm going to change my color, come back in my color corrector, and we make it whatever color we want, and I'm making these changes on the fly, viewing the final output. So the moral of the story, that's kind of a long about way of saying, you don't have to do pre-composing anymore when you're working with nodes. And again, that is just extremely powerful and extremely helpful. Maybe now I want to start working with some masks and mats with this thing, right? That's a pretty common effect. So I'm going to add another merge, and we're going to run the background back up here into this constant. Don't worry about why, not important. We'll add a text node, and we're going to type in the name of your favorite YouTube channel. In this case, it is Indie Rubble. And we'll go ahead and scale that up a little bit like that. Let's go and view it, see how it's looking. I like that. Now, I can use that text as a mask. Okay, I've masked out my composite. I can move this around, put it just where I want it. I can say, okay, I want to cover up her nose. We see both of her eyes right there. That looks really good. Go and scale it up a little bit more. I'm doing this all in real time, looking at my final output. Now I can come in. I want to move this other girl back over into the shot a little bit more. There she is. Boom, there we go. All right. Hold on to your seats, we're gonna try this in After Effects now, I'm trying to do that exact same thing. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a piece of text. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. Here's our text. And again, everyone's favorite YouTube channel, Indie Rebel. Now, if I want this to be made up of both the bottom images, guess what? I gotta pre-compose this sucker again. So I'm gonna take pre-comp one, and I'm gonna take the other pre-comp one, and pre-compose them. Yes, you can pre-compose the pre-comps. There we are. And now I got to toggle over to this other mode where the, some other buttons are and give it an alpha mat in my track mat settings. There it is. Cool. I can move my text around like we did before to line it up exactly where I want it. Let's say we want to see both of our eyes. There we go. Now I decide I don't like where this girl's positioned. Well, I got to go into that new pre comp, move her to where I want her to be. Maybe I want her to be over here. And then I gotta bounce back to my final comp to see if I like her there. I can't easily view all the, the steps at once and get the big picture effect of what's going on. So you can see just how tedious this was to do here, whereas back in my node setup, it was real easy. I could still even now go through and you know reposition her while looking at the final shot. So those are just some of the big reasons why I prefer uh, nodes to layers. One other thing that I think is pretty cool is you can actually use your masks multiple times. Check this out. If I wanted to actually mask the girl individually, let's go and take a look at where she is here, I can do that. I can now run my same text into the mask, and there it all is. It's, it's worked out perfectly. So now from here on out, the girl is just the text. But the cool thing is that my mask is still here for everything else too. And where that comes into play is that if I wanted to, I could come in 
and uh, let's just move this off to the side a little bit so you get a little bit better idea. There you can see the gaps in her and the other stuff with that one. If I decide to change my text, I can just change it once and we'll just call it VFX Fun. Everything gets updated automatically. My final comp one does. The mask of just the girl gets updated. I can you know, move things back to where I want them to be, repositioning everything. Uh, I want to take my uh, text here. We're going to add another transform node. And you can get really crazy with this stuff real quick. Position things where you want. There she is. Come back down to here. Everything gets just composited together, blends together, and uh, really just works so much better in the node-based system. If I wanted to do that inside of After Effects, <laughs> oy, I would need to start duplicating multiple things. I'm going to go like into the pre-comp, and you would take your text, and you need to copy and paste it into here and add more track mats. And you know, at the end of the day, when I render it out, I'm going to be starting from here. Now I want to change something, I go into a pre-comp. Oh, I got to change something more, I got to go into another pre-comp. It just becomes ridiculous and you can see why you're not going to be able to keep track of what all you've done and how things are put together. You do it with nodes and even though I've just quickly assembled this on the fly and it's a little bit sloppy, it's still easy enough for me if I do a really quick cleanup on it here to look at this and know exactly how this is all put together. Uh, if we view the, the full shot here. There it is. I can see everything at once. I can access everything at once. I'm viewing my final shot down here, but I can make changes at any point in time. I can quickly go in and look at any element. If I want to look how the helicopter's looking, I want to see how the girl looks. I want to go back to just the, the background again. Maybe I want to go back down to my final shot. No, I don't like that one. We're going to go to the one above it where I just had some roto stuff going. It's so simple, so easy to do. Uh, I really think more independent filmmakers are going to be switching over to nodes here in the future. And if that's something that you would like to do, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Check out some of my other videos. You'll find one linked below that gets you started with node-based compositing. We'll teach you how Natron works. We'll teach you how to do things like adding muzzle flashes and bullet hits. We'll be doing screen replacements. Uh, we've got just a lot of really cool stuff here on the channel. And I've got some new tutorials coming soon as well. Again, all of them in a node-based environment. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. My name is Chris Temple, L Director, and you've been watching Indie Rebel VFX, Hollywood Effects, without the Hollywood budget.